Today I'm going to go over how to use the laser engraver. So first we need to design something in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to open up Adobe Illustrator. And I'm going to have to select the template or make a template. When I click new file, I'll get some of my recent sizes. And you always want to start off this 18 by 32 inch document. If you're on a laptop that has Illustrator, it probably doesn't have this yet. So you're going to have to make this by selecting anything that you see here and then typing in all of this information. So you'd select this and then make this inches and then input all your information, make this RGB put this 18, make this 32, make sure it's in portrait, and then hit create. Because I already have the template here set up, I'm just going to click that one and hit create. The 18 by 32 refers to the size of the overall laser engraver. Chances are your project isn't 18 inches by 32 inches. It's probably much smaller. So we're going to hit Edit Artboard and set our job size. For this example, you need to put in the actual size of the wood. So if we had wood that's 5 or let's say 12 and a quarter wide by 18, we would put that in. It's important that these dimensions are exact. If the wood is 12 and a quarter, you have to put in 12 and a quarter, not 12. In order to get a fraction into decimal form, you must take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. So 12 and 1 quarter, if you take 1 and divide by 4, you get 0.25. You add 12 to it, and that's how I got my 12.25. There are also charts hanging in the room and available online, which will list the fractionals, fractions and their decimal equivalent. When you're happy with your changes, click here or hit enter so it actually changes the art for which it did and then click exit. You should only have one artboard. If these arrows are present, then you need to start, go back into art, edit artboard and delete it. So you only have one, we only want one. Now I have one artboard and the dimensions are set, I can start my designing. I'm gonna go on the internet and find an image that I wanna laser engrave. I want to do this image, so I'm going to right-click, copy. And then I'm going to paste it in my file. This image has a lot of white background. This is going to mess up the laser engraver. I want to get rid of that. It also has this TM, and I don't want the TM. So I'm going to trace it. On the right window here, I have image trace, which I'm gonna select. And it gives me a lot of options. How do you, it's saying, how do you want me to trace it? I don't really know what the best option is. So I just select through whatever I think. I've done this enough times where sometimes I kind of have an idea, but you never really know. You just have to kind of mess around with it and see which one traces it the best. In this example, I like the low fidelity photo the best. And I'm gonna hit expand, which is actually gonna convert it to a vector. And the vector is all these mathematical points. It, it's a bit more precise. Vectors are scalable to make it bigger or larger really easy. If you wanna cut something with the laser engraver, it has to be a vector. It can engrave 
pixels without a problem. Right now I'm tracing the image because I want to edit it and delete some stuff. I want to take this back white background. I'm going to first ungroup it so I can select things individually. And I'm going to start deleting things I don't want. Like I'm going to take the white background and I'm going to hit delete. I don't want that. This little dot here, I don't want that. Maybe I don't want the Shelby lettering. If I want, I could start to delete these things. I'm going to leave it because I like the way it looks. When you delete whatever you don't want, make a big box and hit group. This is going to make it all lock together again. If you hold shift when you resize it, it keeps it proportional. If you don't hold shift, you're going to distort it, which maybe you want to do, maybe you don't want to do. You don't need to trace every image you laser engrave. You only need to trace it if, number one, you want to cut it out, and this video does not go over cutting. Or number two, if you want to start deleting and editing the image. I could have just left the image untraced and engraved. It would come out different than it will now, but that is an option. If you want to put in text, you can take the type tool, click it, make a text box. It's small right now, so I'm going to increase the font size just so it's easier to work with. And I'm going to type my name. If you select the text, you can then change the font to something that you'd like if you don't like the default font. Now, I don't really like how this isn't centered. You could eyeball it and try to make it look centered. Or I can set the X to half of the width. So my overall width was 12 and a quarter. I'm gonna, half of 12 and a quarter is 6.125. So now, if you look, the middle is at 6.125, so I know it's centered across the width. I don't want to center it across the Y because I have stuff that's going to be under it. So I'm going to manually adjust it to an area that I like. Same thing with this. I'm going to type in the X to center it, the coordinates, but I need to change this text box to be right at the end, otherwise it would be inaccurate. So now that the text box width is the same as the Fernandez. I can put it in. If it's really big like it was before, it won't center properly. You want the text box to end where your text ends. And then hit enter, now that's centered. Now I have a design that is perfect. I want to engrave it on the wood. In this next phase of the video, I'm going to show you how to actually engrave the image onto the wood. To do this, you must be on the desktop in the wood shop, which is connected to the laser engraver. You cannot do it from any of the laptops. I click File and Print. We want the orientation to be portrait, and we want the top left corner to go in the top left corner of the CNC machine at zero, zero. This phase of printing can only be done at the computer that is hooked up to the laser engraver, by the way. You can't do this on the laptop. You could do all your design work on the laptop, but then you're gonna have to save the file and come to the desktop that's hooked up to the laser engraver and do this phase. So I've got my orientation portrait, top left corner, ZZ, I hit setup. 
I hit continue and I go to preferences. Here I'm going to pick what kind of wood I have. So I have to make sure I go under natural. If I'm working with pine, pine's a soft wood, so I would go under soft wood and hit pine. Then I take a dial caliper and I measure my exact thickness. Again, this has to be exact to come out correctly. It's very important. Since it's flat, fixture type should be blank, or you can hit none. It doesn't matter. Just make sure rotary is not selected. It should be none, or it should just be blank and have nothing. Now, if you do a lot of laser engraving, you might know I want to change the intensity of the laser. This is a warning that's just saying it can't cut it. We can hit yes, that's fine. If you do a lot of laser engraving, you might want to change the intensity of the laser to make it darker, or you might already know you want to make it lighter. For your first couple of projects, I would leave it at default, and if it's too light, we can just run another pass. In that second pass, we could decrease the intensity or increase it based on what you want. I've been doing some edits right now, you can see, right? But nothing is permanent until I hit apply. When I hit apply, it saves it. When apply is grayed out, that means you actually made a difference. Sometimes you have to hit apply twice. If I make a change and I want it plus 50, it's not doing it until I actually hit apply. Now it locked it. If I make another change, again, it's not current until I hit apply. If I'm happy with all my settings, then I hit OK, hit print. Some of this changed. I have to, again, make sure it's portrait, make sure my top left is 0, 0, and I hit print. Now, I minimize my Adobe Illustrator. And when I go to the UCP, which is, again, on the desktop, here's my drawing. I have to look, make sure it's in the right spot. I could tell it's the correct orientation. If you had it, some of the settings messed up, it might be over here or in some other area of the workspace. Now I would turn on the laser engraver. I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna make a bunch of noise. I would then turn on the ventilation, turn on the compressed air, and once this thing warms up, I would be able to click the green button and it would machine it. One quick tip is if you want to see a runtime, you could click this button right here and it will estimate the runtime for you. So now I know how long my product is.